Dayton Clarence Miller March 13, 1866, to February 22, 1941, was an American physicist, astronomer, acoustician, and accomplished amateur flautist. An early experimenter of X-rays, Miller was an advocate of ether theory and absolute space and an opponent of Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. Born in Ohio to Charles Webster Dewey and Vienna Pomeroy Miller, he graduated from Baldwin University in 1886 and obtained a doctorate in astronomy at Princeton University under Charles A. Young in 1890. Miller spent his entire career teaching physics at the Case School of Applied Science in Cleveland, Ohio, as head of the physics department from 1893 until his retirement in 1936. Following the discovery of X-rays by Wilhelm Röntgen in 1895, Miller used cathode ray tubes built by William Crookes to make some of the first photographic images of concealed objects, including a bullet within a man's limb. Active in many scientific organizations, Miller was a member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and the American Philosophical Society. During the 1920s, he served as secretary, vice president, and president of the American Physical Society and as chairman of the Division of Physical Sciences of the National Research Council. From 1931 to 1933, he was president of the Acoustical Society of America. Topic: Scientific contributions. Topic. Ether research In 1900, he began work with Edward Morley on the detection of ether drift, at the time one of the hot areas of fundamental physics. Following on with the basic apparatus as the earlier Michelson-Morley experiment, Miller and Morley published another null result in 1904. These experimental results were later cited in support of Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. Miller continued to work on refining his experimental techniques after 1904, conducting millions of measurements on ether drift, and eventually developing the most sensitive interferometer in the world at that time. Dayton Miller performed over 326,000 turns of interferometer with 16 readings each one, more than 5,200,000 measurements. They showed what appeared to be a small amount of drift, about 9 km per second, one-third of the velocity of the Earth around the Sun, with white light and 32 m arms he could see nearly always the same result. A shift amplitude of 0.12 plus or minus 0.01 fringe, incompatible with zero. A shift phase which points to an apex in the constellation Dorado, the amplitude analysis suggests a drag of ether. But the analysis of phase suggests that the solar system goes towards the constellation Dorado at a speed of 227 km per second. These results were presented by Miller as a positive indication of the existence of an ether drift. However, the effect Miller saw was tiny, much smaller than would be expected for a stationary ether. In order for these results to be consistent with an ether, it had to be assumed that the ether was dragged along with the Earth to a much greater extent than ether theories typically predicted. Values that high could be eliminated due to other physical phenomena like stellar aberration, which put upper limits on the amount of dragging. Furthermore, the measurement was statistically far from any other measurements being carried on at the time. Fringe shifts of about 0.01 were being observed in many experiments, while Miller's 0.08 was not duplicated anywhere else, including Miller's own 1904 experiments with Morley, which showed a drift of only 0.015. Based on an error analysis, Miller's critics argued that he overestimated the precision of his results, and that his measurements were actually perfectly consistent with a fringe difference of zero, the null result that every other experiment was recording. However, Miller continued to defend his results, claiming that the probable reason for the so-called null results were that they were not being done at high locations such as mountain tops where the ether wind drift was supposedly much higher due to less ether drag. Einstein was interested in this ether drift theory and acknowledged that a positive result for the existence of ether would invalidate the theory of special relativity, but commented that altitudal influences and temperatures may have provided sources of error in the findings. Miller commented, the trouble with Professor Einstein is that he knows nothing about my results. He ought to give me credit for knowing that temperature differences would affect the results. He wrote to me in November suggesting this. I am not so simple as to make no allowance for temperature. During the 1920s a number of experiments, both interferometry based, as in Miller's experiment, and others using entirely different techniques, were conducted and these returned a null result as well. 
Even at the time, Miller's work was increasingly considered to be a statistical anomaly, an opinion that remains true today, given an ever-growing body of negative results. For example, Georg Jos reprised Miller's experiment using a very similar setup the arms of his interferometer were 21 meters versus the 32 meters in the Miller experiment and obtained results that were 1 50th the magnitude of those from Miller's. However Miller claimed that the explanation for results of the experiments of Georg Jos were because they were done at low altitude in the interior of a building where the ether wind was very low. Topic Shankland analysis In 1955, Robert S. Shankland, S. W. McCuskey, F. C. Leone, and G. Cuerti performed a re-analysis of Miller's results. Shankland, who led the report, noted that the signal that Miller observed in 1933 is actually composed of points that are an average of several hundred measurements each, and the magnitude of the signal is more than ten times smaller than the resolution with which the measurements were recorded. Miller's extraction of a single value for the measurement is statistically impossible, the data is too variable to say this number is any better than that. The data, from Shankland's position, supports a null result as equally as Miller's positive. Shankland concluded that Miller's observed signal was partly due to statistical fluctuations and partly due to local temperature conditions and, also, suggested that the results of Miller were due to a systematic error rather than an observed existence of ether. In particular he felt that Miller did not take enough care in guarding against thermal gradients in the room where the experiment took place, as, unlike most interferometry experiments, Miller conducted his in a room where the apparatus was deliberately left open to the elements to some degree. In Shanklin's analysis, no statistically significant signal for the existence of ether was found. Shanklin concluded that Miller's observed signal was spurious, due mainly to uncontrolled temperature effects rather than to the observed existence of an ether. In addition, some mainstream scientists today have argued that any signal that Miller observed was the result of the experimenter effect, i.e., a bias introduced by the experimenter's wish to find a certain result, which was a common source of systematic error in statistical analysis of data before modern experimental techniques were developed. This effect was not addressed by name in Miller's early textbook on experimental techniques, C.F., Ginn and Company, 1903. Topic Roberts analysis In 1986, Tom Roberts performed a standard error analysis of Miller's ether drift data, using 67 of Miller's original data sheets obtained from the CWRU archives. This error analysis is related to the averaging Miller performed, and is unassailable. The error bars on the individual data points are nearly ten times larger than the variation in those points, so Miller's results are not statistically meaningful, not even close. It is also shown why Miller thought his result was valid. The data analysis he used is a comb filter that aliases most of the noise into the same bin where a signal would be, accurately mimicking the signal he sought. In addition, a re analysis using modern techniques accurately models the drift of the interferometer. The 42 runs for which the instrument was reasonably stable yield an upper limit on ether drift of 6 km per second. Topic Other endeavors Dr. Miller published manuals designed to be student handbooks for the performance of experimental problems in physics. In 1908, Miller's interest in acoustics led him to develop a machine to record sound waves photographically, called the phonodake. He used the machine to compare the waveforms produced by flutes crafted from different materials. During World War I, Miller worked with the physical characteristics of pressure waves of large guns at the request of the government. Dayton Miller was elected to the National Academy of Science in 1921. He was a member of the National Research Council in Washington, D.C. from 1927 to 1930. Topic published works Laboratory Physics, a student's manual for colleges and scientific schools, New York, Ginn & Company, 1903 extract from a letter dated Cleveland, Ohio, August 5, 1904, to Lord Kelvin from Profs. Edward W. Morley and Dayton C. Miller, Philosophical Magazine, S6, Volume 8. No. 48, December 1904, pp. 753-754 on the theory of experiments to detect aberrations of the second degree, with Edward Morley, Philosophical Magazine, S6, Volume 9. No. 53, May 1905, pp. 669 to 680. Report of an experiment to detect the Fitzgerald Lorentz effect with Edward Morley. Proceedings of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, Vol. XLI, No. 12. 1905. Final report on ether drift experiments with Edward Morley, Science, Vol. 25, No. 2. p. 
525, 1907. The Science of Musical Sounds, New York, The Macmillan Company, 1916, revised 1926. Anecdotal History of the Science of Sound, New York, The Macmillan Company, 1935. Sound Waves, Their Shape and Speed, New York, The Macmillan Company, 1937. Sparks, Lightning and Cosmic Rays, New York, The Macmillan Company, 1939. The Ether Drift Experiments and the Determination of the Absolute Motion of the Earth Reviews of Modern Physics 5, 203-242 1933 See also Ether and Luminiferous Ether History of Physics List of Physics Topics Michelson-Morley Experiment Topic. References and external links Dayton Miller at Find a Gravemain. Dayton Clarence Miller. Today in Science, March 13 Burse. Dayton Miller Images. American Institute of Physics, 2003. William Fickinger. Miller's Waves. An Informal Scientific Biography 2011, Other Endeavors, Dayton C. Miller Flute Collection at the Library of Congress. Dayton Miller's Acoustics Collection, describing his research in acoustics. The Phonodake. The Science of Musical Sounds. Professor Dayton Miller's Research in Acoustics. Engineering Sciences E-129. Crooks X-ray Tubes. Dittrich Medical History Center, Case Western Reserve University. 2004.